ChordStylePiano.com Learn Piano for Free video series. Today we're going to be learning the classic children's song, Mary Had a Little Lamb. We're going to be separating our hands. We're going to focus on learning just the right hand, and then we'll learn the left hand. This is a valid and useful technique. If you see a piano player who's very experienced, you may not see this, especially in a performance, of course. But when they're practicing a song that's at or just above their playing ability, separating the hands is often what people will do to make sure that they have each of the parts correctly learned and then they'll put them together. So let's look at the music here for Mary Had a Little Lamb. As you can see, we're going to start with the right hand on the note E and finger number three, that's the middle finger of the right hand. That is this note right here. So middle C is here, then there's a D, and here's the E. This is our starting note. You can see it highlighted in blue. You can see it there on the treble clef. Let's look at our music again. So that's our starting note. Let's talk about the rhythm. It's in 4-4 four, four time, which means we'll have four counts in each measure. Remember, measures are the space between these lines, these vertical lines that you see here. So we have a total of eight measures in this song, and each of them will get four counts. And the quarter note, which is this, the black one that's filled in like this, and it has a stem, that's a quarter note. It's going to get the beat. So here in the first measure, we have four beats. Da, 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 da. One, two, three, four. And in the second measure, we have four beats as well, but this is a half note, and so we're going to hold it for twice as long as we would hold these other notes. So it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. The third measure, we have the same rhythm. The note is D, just below the E. One, two, three, four. And over here, same rhythm again. We're going to go from an E to a G. So the E is played to the third finger. There's no right hand movement in the song. So once you start, this is the only indication of where your right hand should be. Other songs that we'll learn soon will have a little bit of hand movement. We'll start slow, we'll ease into it, but in this beginning phase we are going to just keep our hand in the same place. So once you find your hand position you'll be good and every other note will be accessible without having to stretch, without having to move your hand at all. So this will be played, the E will be played with your third finger, and then if you look on the piano you'll have a G note. Let's look at where that is. So here's our E, and then there's an F, and there's G. So that's what it looks like on the treble clef, and you can see it there highlighted in blue. Dun, dun, dun. One, two, three, four. That's how we're going to be playing that last measure of music. I'm going to be kind of going back and forth with the music, so one of the things that you should be aware of is that you can go to chordstylepiano.com and you can buy a book that contains all of these songs. Book one is the book we're in right now. It has 50 songs, and they're in a progressive order. So they'll start out easy, and they'll get harder as you go through the book. There's also book two. Again, it has 50 songs, and book three has 49 songs. So 149 songs total. And if you want to find out more about those books, you can visit chordstylepiano.com. It might be a little easier than trying to figure everything out just from the videos. So now we're down on the slower line. So we have E, D, C, D. So we're going to play the third finger, the second finger, the first finger, and then back to the second finger. And the rhythm will be just like this first measure. One, two, three, four. And then this measure is very easy on the right hand. It's just the same note. Da, 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 da. And then down here, we have the same rhythm. And over here we have a whole note, and this gets four counts. It takes the entire measure, so we just hold that for the whole time. One, two, three, four, and that's the ending. So let's just play that right hand, and I'll do it once with the music showing, and then I'll do it again with the, uh, the keyboard showing. So watch the music as I follow along. Okay, now I'll do that 
that same thing showing the keyboard instead so you can see the notes that I'm playing. Okay, now let's look at the left hand. There are two ways to play the left hand. One is to look at the notes on the bass clef. I've written them out. This is the other way. If you look here, there's a chord symbol. It's a C. This one has no chord symbol, which means that we just play the C again. Then we have a G7, a C, a C, a C, even though it's not written, it's implied, a G7, and a C. So there's only two chords in this song. We, we play them repeated times, so there's several C's that we'll be playing, but two unique chords, a C and a G7. That's all we need to know with our left hand. And the way we play those, eventually you'll find yourself having these memorized, so it'll be a lot easier. But of course you can look here on the left hand for now, and you can see that a C chord consists of a C, an E, and a G. So on the keyboard, we'll start with middle C, so you can kind of get oriented. There's your middle C. When we're playing with the left hand, we're going to go an octave lower. So an octave, uh, think of an octopus. An octopus has eight legs, an octave is eight notes down. So if we're here on middle C, we go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we start here, we we'll call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're down eight notes. So there's our C, that's the bottom, and there's our E, and there's our G. And we'll be playing in a block chord style. That's not necessary. We could do this kind of thing like I was doing in the beginning when I played Scarborough Fair. A lot of times people think that because we're just learning this basic chord style piano that that's all chord style piano is. That's what I once thought and I learned fortunately from a very good teacher that uh, chord style piano can be extremely sophisticated or it can be extremely simple. We're starting with the basics but we can have a lot of fun with chord style piano. So here we are with our C chord. Now let's look at the G7 chord. Oh, and I want to note that uh, the finger numbers for the C chord, the 5 will play the C, the 3 will play the E, and the 1 will play the G. Our G7 right here is going to be, on the lowest note, it's going to be a B. So which B is that? It's the one right below. So here's where our C chord was. There's the B. That we're going to, so it's just right below there. And then we have an F and a G. We play them all together. The G and the F. The G is played with the first finger. F is played with the second. B is played with the fifth finger. And there is our G7 chord. So the switch that we're going to be doing C chord. If you think of this kind of like a guitar, think of a guitarist. A guitarist plays chords while singing along. Essentially, that's what our left hand is doing, and we can sing along, or our right hand can sing along by playing the melody. So I'll play a basic version, and let's just play through the left hand. So we're going to be, the, the left hand consists entirely of whole notes. A whole note is looks like this. It has no stem. It's hollow, meaning it's not filled in. This one is filled in. It's got black. This one is not filled in, and it has no stem. A half note has a stem, and it's not filled in. So that's how you know how long to hold the notes. Quarter note, half note, whole note. So the entire left hand is done with whole notes. So we're going to count to four with each measure we play. One, two, three, four. 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 So practice that for a while by itself. Practice the left hand by itself. Practice the right hand by itself and then put them together. It can be challenging at first. That's one of the very first challenges of playing piano is the right hand and the left hand together at the
the same time. They work together, but they work apart. Your right hand might go up, your left hand might go down. They do very different things. We're training your hands, we're training your muscle memory, and we're showing you how to be able to play piano by slowly learning to do different things with your hands. It's not easy. I have been there. But it is possible, and it just takes practice. So I'm going to play through the entire song. We'll play a basic version. I'll show the keyboard here, and then I'll show the music and play through it again. Okay, now I'll show the music and do that same thing for our basic version. beginner don't be intimidated by this I'm going to play a little fancier version of Mary Had a Little Lamb just having some fun with some of the more advanced chord style piano techniques that you will learn as this video series continues